welcome back to my channel the inked reader eva here and today finally i'm actually wrapping up the first one of my tbr that i set up for this year and i am done with it and i thought because it's a horror tbr halloween would be the perfect time for me to wrap up and hopefully you can get some suggestion out of these although if you are an avid reader of horror you probably already read all of them what i'm gonna do though because i have wrapped them up in a bit more details during my um, monthly wrap-ups and i also like the light is going down so i am fighting against time is i'm gonna put them on a list so from the least likes to the top one that i liked they were a total of 10 horror books that i read uh, for the challenge for the tbr so i'm gonna wrap them up from the list to the most liked and i'm gonna give you a very brief synopsis and what i liked the most about the book but i won't get into much details or why i disliked so much it makes sense so starting at number 10 with a very unpopular opinion i have house of leaves this is a very popular horror book and this is the story of this family that moves in a house just to find out that the house inside is bigger than it looks from outside and you follow different perspectives you follow someone who has read or is getting to know what happened to a family that entered the house and at the same time you are following the family that entered the house and what happened to them i'm gonna link down below the wrap-ups where i wrap up the books and link them to each wrap-up so i'm gonna tell you know house of leaves and then link the video uh, so you can get all my thoughts about that and there's been a few months since i've read this and now i realize that this is actually a book that didn't work for me so i ended up absolutely hating this book apart from the family pov so when we follow the family i love that part but i hated the rest and this is a book where you have to love going to a book and be completely confused about what you're reading and liking finding clues and going online and finding theories and then going back and reread it in, light, in the light of what you now know because you're very online so it's kind of a puzzle of a book that you have to unpack and if you love that that's definitely a book for you i definitely say the family subplot and what's going on with them it's absolutely creepy it scared me it would have been very very high up in the list if it was just for the family i didn't like all the rest i didn't like the other point of view and i didn't like the puzzle behind this book i found that it was so boring for me to read and i guess it's just not my kind of book it might be for you but yeah it's definitely at the bottom of my list i personally hated it but i do realize that this is a very personal taste that is very much against the majority of people that fell of the genre number nine song of a dead dreamer and uh grimesby grimsby i put here the cover i owned this book and then i got rid of it which was a pity because i absolutely love the cover this is a collection of short stories that didn't work for me i again didn't really like this it wasn't even a three star it was around like two stars at this point and short stories are not my cup of tea I always said that and I'm gonna stand by it although I did read and love other short stories especially in the horror genre so I wouldn't say that I didn't I dislike this just because it was short stories so I did enjoy in the past short stories so I know that there was something specific of this book that I didn't like uh, again it's one of those books where the stories were not very much scary um, and they didn't creep me out but also what would happen is that I would start a story and then just get bored by it and just get distracted and since the writing style and the plot was I don't know again as a bit of a puzzle and it was a bit whimsical in the sense that it wasn't clear what was going on um, I just got lost in the story lost the thread of the plot and then by the time i catch up with it i was like oh okay or maybe i didn't even bother catching up so i would just read page after page and by the end i was like oh that's it so yeah disappointing again it's one that's kind of loved by people that love the genre so i don't know what's wrong with me i mean probably i can give you a list of what's wrong with me from a to z but that's a whole other topic that we're not gonna get into right now so yeah didn't like this ninth place number eight and let's continue on <laughs> with unpopular opinions we have the elementals now before you come for me is a 3.75 stars 
book for me so i didn't hate it by any means this is a kind of a classic horror by now um and it was written decades ago and the, the premise of this is that you've got this family who owns three houses on a shoreline in some place in usa and they actually occupy two of the houses during summertime or during the holidays but they never go to the third house because this third house has been almost covered all by sand and has been pretty much abandoned but there are also creepy stuff linked to this house so you follow this family there after a death if i'm not mistaken decide to go all again to the you know holiday house spend some time together and you've got the element though of the children in the family wanting to explore it to explore this abandoned house and of course stuff going on there it's been a while since i read these and i don't remember exactly the plot i mean i do remember the horror element of it i just don't remember exactly how they come in this occasion to go exactly to the house but i believe it's there it did scare me in the sense that it did add some elements that put me at an ease um so i was a bit scared creeped out in some moments but overall i thought that the shoreline wasn't the greatest setting for a horror story maybe i'm too old school in the sense that for me the haunted house is you know creepy old castle or mansion in the middle of nowhere that has been abandoned if you watch the hunting of hill house on netflix uh, or read the book that's the kind of creepy house that i think of so i struggle to reconnect with these beach house <laughs> that was creepy i love the family dynamics though i thought one of the most interesting thing about this is actually the family and how dysfunctional that is so it was fun i had a good time but again if i have to compare it to other books that i read it's probably i i couldn't give it more than eight place number seven rosemary baby uh this is actually the only book that i don't ever wrap up for because when i wrapped this up it was before january it was the only book that i think i've read before the start of the year 2021 and somehow during my monthly wrap up i completely skipped this don't know what's wrong with me but basically this is the story of this woman she is actually pregnant and throughout the book you follow her pregnancy after something that her partner and her neighbor do make her think that something's very wrong with her pregnancy and then she is involuntary become involved in a cult that's up to no good i'm just gonna leave it very vague because most, most people will be familiar with either you know the book itself or the movie which i've not watched but i want to this is funny because i actually gave these three stars which is lower than what i gave to the elementals but when i came down to compile this list and suggest actually horror and just going through the horror side of things this is not scary but I don't know it's maybe me relating to the main character or feeling her fear or liking the way the plot developed i j i just found these more emotionally scary and for me than the elemental was i don't know i just i was doing the list and said this is a bit more than the elementals i guess one thing that i didn't like is that i thought this was about the baby rosemary baby and instead we have a pregnancy but it's the whole book kind of and i wasn't expecting that and also it, it's kind of a whole school horror but again the characters the fast pace of these and it just had me glue up the page i would definitely still recommend these and i will definitely check out the book the movie sorry number six my best friend exorcism these i love the cover of this first of all can we so this is another one that I didn't find scary at all. This is the story of this bunch of girls. One night they go out, they are hanging out together. One disappears until morning and when they find her, they can feel that something terrible has happened. All of a sudden, they start to believe that this friend that had disappeared throughout the night has actually been possessed by the devil. And of course, you know, the title says it all. Full of 80s references, which I loved. Hendrix is a horror writer that i really like although so far none of his stories have you know kind of disturbed me it's more like this is so bloody fun funny story again i gave this 3.5 which is even again lower than the elementals but again i guess i was expecting too much by this book and what i liked was the 80 references was how fast this was but i didn't find this scary so ultimately i was compiling her uh, and going through you know a horror tbr and if this was not as scary as i expected that I had to play a part and also i found that it was a bit too far-fetched like the way he had integrated 
the supernatural and stuff that was going on wasn't done well enough for me to be even credible in a fantasy world. I don't know how to explain it better than this. But yeah, overall, I will keep reading this stuff. I will keep this because I love the cover. It was 3.5 stars. I'm not complaining, but I've read better by him for sure. Number five. Hell House. This is again a staple in the horror classic genre, so it's the same author that wrote I Am Legend, which I've not read yet, but I will. And this is the story of this bunch of characters that decide to go to Hell House to find out if it's truly haunted. One of them is kind of a scientist, kind of, it does that kind of weird psychology branch which doesn't really exist. And basically, he's just saying that, you know, ghosts are not real all the manifestations that you're experiencing in a haunted house are because of energies that are going on so you got some characters that are going to say you know listen you know ghosts are real and this other guy this douchebag huge douchebag keeps saying no things are not real ghosts are not real just these weird energies parapsychologists something of the sort i don't know if that's a thing if that's a thing it shouldn't be i gave this four stars because this was extremely gross like i i thought this was horrifying in the sense that what happens here is is heavy like i think this is definitely comes with a lot of warnings um it's the violence and there is also sexual violence if i remember correctly just it's gruesome what happens to these characters what i didn't like is that there is an element where where you're in a haunted house and you know you can actually see ghosts and you know a lot of weird shit is going down and you actually physically experienced being hunted and you're still going on with now it's just energy where ghosts are not real there is an element of what you're just dumb or like this is not credible anymore i understand that this character is a skeptical one but there is a part where you should stop being skeptical for this to be believable in a fantasy world, if it makes sense. So he got on my nerves a lot. Uh, the plot itself was okay, but I think what I liked is this grossed me out. If you're in the genre, definitely give this a try, but I wouldn't say, oh, if you have not read this, then you cannot consider yourself a fan of horror, if it makes sense. It's just one that you can potentially skip it. Number four, I think you do the good stuff. Nosferatu. This is a chunk of a book and this is the story of this serial killer that, uh, that has some paranormal powers and he abducts children and takes them to this sort of Christmas land which has nothing to do with the Christmas we are aware of. Joy Hills ruined Christmas for me after this book. <laughs> to be fair, like I will never look at Christmas the same way and children singing the same way that that I did before reading this book. And you follow the serial killer but you also follow this girl that it's the only one that when she was a child escapes him. And now she's a grown-up woman that has to face back what happened to her and she thought this guy, you know, she had defeated him and turns out that he's very much still alive. So what I loved about this was that for how big this was I really enjoyed the um, bad guy and I like the introspection we get in him. It was a very, it was evil, like he wasn't a great character at all, but the way his evilness was explored and talked about, I really enjoyed. And I really loved the main couple in these. I loved, you know, the young girl that grows up. I don't remember her name because I'm horrible with name, but I loved her, loved her partner. I thought it was such a like amazing couple, such a kick-ass characters, but I love that. Said that, the only, th the only thing that I probably didn't like much was that this got a bit tedious in some parts just because of the length of it, and there was also a lot of traveling around, which is a part of books that I usually do not enjoy. Like I do not enjoy descriptions of traveling from point A to point B. Just tell me, oh, they've got there, that's it. I, I don't care about the travel. And there's a lot of travel in this and I gave it four stars. I would definitely recommend this. So the light is going, the light is going. I'm coming a bit closer because I think with, you know, the absence of light, if I come closer, um, the quality is a bit better, but probably it's just me. This will come as a surprise because actually I thought this was going to be, when I started this challenge, I thought this was going to be 10th place. And instead it's number three. And this is Frozen Charlotte. Now this is a YA horror. And the premise of this is that you got this girl She's in a diner with her best friend one night when something very creepy happens and her best friend ends up dying that night. And she 
thinks that whatever happened that night at the diner is linked to what happened to her friend and the only way she can get answers is that by traveling to a remote island in England I believe where she will stay with her family cousins that live in a very creepy house uh, where some weird stuff is going down and in this house there are a lot of creepy dolls I don't do dolls I don't do creepy dolls in the sense that they freak me out so the fact that this was based on that there was already the element of as soon as she described it uh, like a ceramic door like you know these kind of doors I was just like okay I'm already scared so that probably worked in its favor but to be a YA horror it was eerie it was so fast-paced and at the same time interesting like the plot did go in places where I wasn't expecting like I honestly wanted to know what was the mystery behind and I loved it from the start to the end and I gave it 4.25 stars and I would I will continue on I think it is a prequel uh, to this which makes sense if you read this so I'm gonna read the sequel for sure and I would definitely definitely recommend it especially if you are into horror but you're more on the younger side but even if you're not even if you are like an adult as I am definitely it's worth still a try but I wish I'd read this when I was a young adult I would have fallen in love with horror and the genre probably sooner than I actually did number two these are the two books that I truly loved like I think if I have to come back now that's been October to all I've read this year these are books that will stood out even if they were not belonging to this challenge for example so number two it's 12 Nights at Rotter House. This I've just read very recently. This actually was the last book I've read for this challenge. And this is a story of this writer. He is specialized in writing stories about haunted houses. He convinces this woman who's just acquired Rotter House to make it into like a haunted house where you pay ticket to go inside to let him go before she opens up the house to the public. So he says to kind of write a book about it and publicize it more so she will get more people interested in than you know going and buying the ticket and experiencing Rotter House for themselves and he decides to invite his best friend to go there um, they had a fallen off a year before but he wants to rekindle that friendship and just like let's go together let's go to the house and spend 13 nights there and then let's write a book about that and I love this the reason why probably is because it reminded me a lot of one of my favorite movies ever which I'm not gonna give out now because it will be a spoiler this is a very quiet horror like barely nothing happens throughout all of this yet the atmosphere that he creates through small things that might seem meaningless when you know if I were to describe them right now but those small details those eerie vibes that he puts in are just terrifying like this was terrifying and at the same time i do realize that not much happened so i do realize why many people would probably not love this i love this and the end i just loved it i think it was genius i've guessed tiny tiny bit of one thing but i didn't envision what actually it turned up to be and when i read the last page and it was like holy sh like you got me so bad like you got me like I would not have guessed this love this creeped me out I was like okay maybe you know I was just thinking about maybe I shouldn't read this at night time so and it's absurd because I've read more graphic stuff than these way more action and graphic stuff than these like hell house or whatever and yet these put me upset me in different ways plus the, gen the end was genius and on number one the only I think I gave Rotter House 4.75 stars if i'm not mistaken but the only five stars of this list so he had to go on number one it's a book that probably you your mother your grandmother have already read and i was so behind and i honestly don't know i don't have a good justification for me not reading this sooner so you know if you want to insult me in the comments down below i guess i deserve it but number one is Frankenstein by mary shelley i ended up reading the um illustrated edition by grace wimley the only reason why I decided to go with this is because it's exactly the same text uh, so everything is the same yes she has shortened some parts like where she made drawings instead um, but overall the original text is all in here so that's why I decided to do that and I integrated and checked with the other book that you know I was not missing parts and I do have to say that the illustration probably did play a part in why I loved this so much but I am 100% sure that even if 
I was to read these without illustrations, I would have still loved it. It's just Frankenstein, like the story, the fact that this has been written so long ago. Is it scary? No, it's definitely, you know, if I have to go on a scary point of view, I would do the list in a different order. I did this list in my enjoyment of it more than how disturbing or scary this was. It's just the morality and the message behind these and just the questions that, you know, as a human, you pose yourself if you were in that situation. I love this not only because it was a gothic novel and I love gothic novels, but also because of the discussion that came from that. And if you have not read Frankenstein, do not make the mistake of waiting any longer. And, you know, this is a book I wish I read, in, you know, as soon as I was I'm not a teen. I read and loved Dracula when I was a teen. I would have loved these. Now, you know, I don't know anymore if I'm team Dracula or team Frankenstein. Can I go, can I be both teams? So that was it. And again, I repeat, I've done this um, from least to most enjoyed book in the uh, challenge. It's not based on the scary factor because if it was, probably it would be a bit different. None of these will enter in my most disturbing reads I've ever read. Uh, I'm gonna put them down below. I've done a video before where I was reading the most disturbing books ever written, according to a list, and then I did a video where I was actually telling you about the books that I personally thought were the most disturbing I ever read. To say that, if I have to go on a scary level, I would say that probably House of Leaves needs to be in the top three. Um, Nosferatu, I found it very creepy. This was eerie. This I would, could definitely be considered scary. I thought it's a very quiet horror. The things that ha do happen are very disturbing. But probably the grossest one, if you want to know, it's Hell House. <laughs> this is definitely probably the one that was like, oh, yeah, he did go there, he did go there. Okay, he's re written that down. That's number one, probably. Uh, so, yeah, if that's what you wanted, like the just grossest scariest part that would be my short list all the others are not very much scary at all to be fair but yeah thank you for watching let me know your suggestion for halloween down below let me know if you're intention to pick up any of these books and if you end up reading them because of me or watching this video do let me know what you thought about that i always love to hear back feedbacks i wish you'll enjoy your halloween I wish you have a good night day depending on where you are and i'll see you next time thank you for watching ciao